Thank you for joining us online. At Mission Gathering, we welcome all to Christ's table. If you are Asian, Hispanic, Black, or White, if you are male or female, trans or non-binary, if you are three days old, 30 years old, or 103 years old, if you've never stepped foot in a church, or if you are Buddhist, Roman Catholic, agnostic, or a lifelong evangelical, if you are single, married, divorced, separated, or partnered, if you are straight, gay, lesbian, or bisexual, if you are a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Socialist, or not registered to vote, if you have or have had addictions, phobias, abortions, or a criminal record, if you own your own home, or rent, live with your parents, or are homeless, if you are fully able, disabled, or a person of differing abilities, you are welcome here. This is a letter to a friend at the end of the world and the beginning of a new one. I don't need to remind you of the darkness. You can feel it on your skin. A smoky residue of despair settles over your lungs, choking the hope out of you. I don't need to remind you of the light. You can see it on the horizon, the sun that always rises and the morning that always comes. I don't need to remind you of your strength the iron roses that weave their way around your spine, that keep you upright and stalwart, ready to face the weekly trials. And I don't need to remind you of your soul, soft and light, able to carry you through any darkness that tries to completely envelop you. Instead, I'll remind you of my hand, ready to take yours. Instead, I'll remind you of my heart, ready to hold hope for you when you cannot. Instead, I'll remind you of my face, ready to smile and weep with you when you are overflowing. And instead, I'll remind you of what you already know. We will carry on, and you will not be alone. Love will always find you. Just take some time, you're in the middle. 
Everyone, it's Palm Sunday, and today is the day that we recall the collective hope that happened when Jesus rode on that donkey into the city. But it's also the day where we realize that our ideas and our understanding of how change happens isn't always what we expect it to be. Now, for a lot of people, giving to a church or a charitable organization that has anything to do with religion is really hard. But at Mission Gathering, we've worked hard during the shutdown to use the extra money that we had while we didn't have to run the building to give to others, to, to, to reach out to activists, to, to give money to bail people out of jail, to give money to feed people, to give money to clothe people. You did that. And now as we come back and we're continuing to build this space, this can give this Palm Sunday. If you've never given before, it's, it's really easy. You can cash app, you can vend, you can go online and give through your computer or even give with your phone through our website. But please give, knowing that your gift is 100% tax deductible. As Dorothy Day said, if we render everything unto God and to the purposes of building this kingdom, then there's nothing left to render unto Caesar. So join us this Sunday in giving back and declaring to the world that hope is possible, that that irrational, unexpected hope that comes from Holy Week is still a possibility even today in 2021. Thank you. Hey, Mission Gathering in Issaquah and San Diego, Pasadena and Charlotte. I am uh, so happy to be with you today on this Palm Sunday. We are one week away from Easter. So let's talk about Hanukkah. Just go with me here for a minute. This Hanukkah story actually helps me understand the Jesus story of Palm Sunday a little bit better. So go back with me to uh, 165. Uh, BC, before Christ, which would be like 2186 BC, before COVID. Uh, at the time, in 165, there was a Greek king, a ruler by the name of Antiochus IV, and he was a crazy man. His own people called him mad. And he wanted to essentially take over the world with this Greek way of life, and he did it with violence, and he almost conquered all of Egypt which was huge. Um, and he actually did conquer all of Palestine, which is uh, where the Jews lived, where Jesus was from. And Antiochus IV hated the Jewish people and the Jewish religion. And if you owned the Torah, the first five books of the, the Old Testament, you, uh, it was punishable by death. He actually um, instituted at the Jewish Jerusalem temple where the Israelites worship God, he instituted the worship of the Greek god, Zeus. He sacrificed a pig on the altar of the Jerusalem temple to insult the Jewish people. He turned the area around the Jewish temple into a brothel. He hated the Jewish people and tried to eradicate them in their way of life. And so the Jewish people just got to a point where they had enough. And a group of Jewish people came up and revolted, and they were known as the Maccabees. And so they defeated Antiochus IV and Israel's enemies, and they reconsecrated the temple, and they brought some peace again to the land. And there, this story is found in 1st 2nd Maccabees, which is in a part of the Bible called the Apocrypha, which is in some Bibles and, and not in others, but you can find the story there. And in 2 Maccabees, it talks about how Antiochus IV was killed. It says something like he was so full of arrogance that when he was on his chariot chasing after the Jewish people, he fell off and hurt every limb of his body. And the skin of his body essentially melted off while he was still alive. This was like a scene right out of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And so the Israelites defeated their enemies, and this event is what Hanukkah commemorates. So in 175, Simon Maccabee, who is one of the heroes of those battles, um, he enters Jerusalem, and 1 Maccabees 13.51 says, 
They enter Jerusalem with praise and palm branches and hymns and songs because a great enemy had been crushed and removed from Israel. So 150 years after that, a few generations later, Jesus enters Jerusalem. The crowds wave palm branches and shout praises, much like they did with uh, the Maccabees 150 years earlier. And our text today is from Mark chapter 11. It says, Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. And those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So the people saw Jesus as the one entering Jerusalem, as the one who would bring peace, as the hero, just like the Maccabees a few uh, generations prior, the one who would come into Jerusalem and remove Israel's enemies and bring peace. And scholars, uh, Marcus Borg, John Dominic Crossan, wrote a great book called The Last Week. And in that, they talk about two uh, processionals into the city that were happening. So you had on the east side, Jesus coming in from the Mount of Olives. On the west side, you would have had the Roman leader, Pontius Pilate, coming in on golden chariots and war horses and soldiers and flags and uh, weapons all displaying the, the power and rule of, of Rome. And it would be displaying to the Jerusalem people who they pledged their allegiance to, who that they should honor and worship. And so this procession of Rome would be coming into the city to assert its power over the Jew, uh, Jewish people in Jerusalem to say that the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Lord, uh, the Prince of Peace, is the one who sits on the throne of Rome. I imagine if there was a soundtrack to that Roman processional, it would be John Williams' Imperial March from Star Wars. You would just see the enemy is coming into the city and we are to bow down because we are helpless and there's nothing else we can do. And then on the opposite side of the city, you have Jesus. He walks in on a donkey. This Roman procession into the city was not just a reminder of Rome's power. Um, it was also a kind of a reminder of the political and religious system of Rome that oppressed poor people and kind of benefited the people at the top, the few people at the top. And there were some involved in the Jerusalem temple system that were part of contributing to that system. And so Jesus coming in on the opposite side, riding a young donkey, a colt, we see that as strange, riding a donkey in the city, but back then it was uh, not an uncommon practice for a king. So a king who came into the city on a war horse or a chariot would be saying, I am the ruler, the conqueror, the victorious one. A king who came into a city on a donkey is essentially saying, I come in peace. And the, the donkey in that world, ancient world, was kind of a noble beast that communicated peace. But for the people in Jerusalem, peace came through the destruction of their enemies, uh, like the Maccabees brought 150 years earlier. So the people rally around Jesus and they lay their clothes on the road and the palm branches as like the makeshift royal carpet to bring the king in. And this is kind of this victorious welcome that they wanted to give Jesus because they wanted Jesus to come in and do what the Maccabees did to remove their enemies and bring peace for the Israelites. So they shouted to Jesus, Hosanna. And that meant save us now, rescue now. Years ago, um, I worked at a church, I was a worship leader, and we do a lot of songs by Hillsong. And they had a song called Hosanna. And the first verse of that song said, I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire and the whole earth shakes. And then the chorus says, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, which means save us, rescue us from our enemies. But that is not the picture of Jesus that Mark gives in the gospel. Jesus is riding in on a donkey, not with fire and earthquakes and destruction of our enemies. 
And the next day, Jesus goes into the temple and he doesn't destroy Israel's enemies. He actually calls out the religious leaders in the temple who are contributing to this system of domination and oppressing the poor. And then he tells his followers uh, in Mark eleven twenty five, whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. And that, that Greek word forgive literally means uh, to let go, to release, to let go of your fear and hate, anger, your prejudice toward others. Not coming in to defeat enemies, but to teach forgiveness, letting go of that hate. So Jesus was on a mission not to save his tribe of Israel, his group, but to save and heal all of humanity, including those um, that Israel wanted to be destroyed. So those waving these palm branches shouting, heal us, save us, rescue us now. Five days later, they realized Jesus was not bringing peace the way that they wanted Jesus to. In fact, Jesus was calling them out on their uh, political, religious views, their religious nationalism. And five days later, they went from crying out, save us, to crucify him. And honestly, sometimes I prefer that strong gladiator Jesus coming on the clouds with fire, with earthquakes, who looks like I do and votes like I do, and who's going to come and tell everyone else how they're wrong and I was right the whole time, and he comes and saves me. That's like my best friend Jesus who's always got my back. But the real Christ of this gospel story is the one who brings peace by looking at me and saying, Devin, you're not the one that's right here. You are in just as much, if not more, need of forgiveness as the people you look down on. You need to let go of your hate and prejudice. That is how you're saved. That is where salvation comes, is when you let go of that. That Jesus makes me realize sometimes that I'm the one that is the enemy sometimes. I so often have been the, the cause of oppression. Jesus says, you and my name have enslaved human beings. You and my name have taken over people's land for your own. You and my name have excluded and marginalized people based on their race and gender and sexuality. Hosanna. More like save us from ourselves. Save us from our own fear and our hate and our prejudice. The question I'm asking myself today is, am I wanting to follow this war horse Jesus that comes in to defeat my enemies and save me? Or am I wanting to follow this Jesus on a donkey who brings peace by teaching us to let go of our own hate? who's teaching me that the narrow way of Jesus and the way of salvation is deeply tied up in your own healing. That my salvation and healing is deeply tied to the healing of the world, of all of humanity. It's going to the people who've been looked down on and saying, this is not all there is. Everything is going to be all right. It's been a hard year of a lot of loss and change, and everything being all right does not mean that everything is going to go back to normal and everything is going to be easier and more comfortable. To be a people that says everything is going to be all right means a people who work with God to create a world that is more just and more loving than the one before it. That is what it means to have the hope that everything is going to be all right. So the good news is that world is possible because you are in it. That we are here in it, listening to the Spirit of God within us that is um, challenging us 
in the areas where we need to let go of some hate, some prejudice, some fear, that we need to do, um, become more loving. And the Spirit of God within us that is also calling us forward to create spaces of hope and healing for people. And so we are all working together with God to bring God's reality to this world. As Jesus prayed, may God's will for the renewal and restoration of all humanity in the world be done on earth as it is in heaven. May it be so. To go in peace. Pastor Devin just spoke to us about how sometimes the people we need to be rescued from is ourselves. One of the ways that Jesus gave us to remember how it is to get back to that true self, that one self, that connected to God's self, was this time at the table. This table is open to everyone. So whether you have coffee and juice, or you have a donut or a croissant, whatever you have to eat and drink, join us in this moment where we remember that on the night that he was betrayed, on the night that he was abandoned, on the night that he was denied, and on the night that those women who had given everything to follow him stuck by his side. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, holding up the bread and breaking it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Likewise, he held up the cup, giving thanks and blessing it, saying, this is my love poured out for you. So beloved, God's children, God's blessed, beloved children, take the broken bread, dipping it in the cup, the body of Christ broken for you, the love of God poured out for you, for this is the bread of heaven, and this is the cup of life. Taste and see that our Lord is good. Amen. Hey, Mission Gathering, Pastor Andrew here. Can you believe it's been over a year since we've all been together? Well, that ends this Easter Sunday. At 9 a.m. out in the churchyard, we will be doing a Mission Gathering style sunrise service, because I know none of us really want to be here at 7 a.m. So at 9 a.m., we will be outside to greet the new Easter morning and to declare the divine mystery that Jesus is risen. So please join us. Masks are mandatory, and I get it. We're tired of masks, but masks are the biggest sign that we can show people that we love them. It's the easiest way to love your neighbor. So wear your mask, bring a camping chair if you want. We've got pre-packaged communion on its way, but if you need coffee or snacks, you gotta bring those yourself because we're trying to do our part to stop the spread and to responsibly gather together as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. So I'll see you there at 9 a.m. on Easter morning, and I can't wait to wave, fist bump, like elbow, tap, whatever we gotta do to greet each other. So I'll see you then, bye. Receive this blessing of the Lord. Moving through the gentle and angry, humble and bold, hope and resolute, Christ makes known the power of God. It does not trickle down from on high, but rises up among us in the streets from deep within. Among all the creatures of the earth, let us go declaring Hosanna. Salvation is among us. So mission gatherings all across the country, may you go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the fierce protection and love and covering of God, the mother of us all. Amen, happy Palm Sunday, and welcome to Holy Week.